Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. The college football playoff sneakily is going to be expanding to 12 teams. They did this over the weekend with all these games on and just under the radar. Oh, we're expanding to 12 teams. We had a feeling this was going to happen. It's been hinted at for a long time. They've been wanting to expand it. They've been wanting to go. Some people wanted it at 8. Some people wanted it at 12. Some people wanted it at 16. A lot of people wanted it to stay at 4, but it finally got done. They just expanded it to 12 teams. So let's break down the expansion and whether it's good or bad for the sport. So they're going to start the expansion in 2026. So 2026 is the first year you're going to have 12 teams in the college football playoff. But they did say that they're going to try to encourage commissioners to start in 2024 which I have a pretty good reason why, and I'll get to that later. 2026 is the first year, so it's four years away if that stands. So for the next three, you're going to have a four-team playoff as usual. The six highest-ranked conference champions are going to be in it, so that basically means you're going to have the ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, SEC, and Pac-12 are going to make the college football playoff the champion every single year. And probably a team from the American or the Mountain West will be the other one that gets in there and uh, on most years. And then you're going to have six at-large teams. So, again, just say you have Ohio State winning the Big Ten and Michigan goes 10-2 and two in the ranked eight, they're going to get in. And then if you have uh, Alabama winning the SEC and Texas A&M goes 9-3 and three in the ranked 10, they're going to get in. And if you have USC winning the Pac-12 and then you got Oregon going 10-2 and two in the ranked 12, they're going to get in. So that's the six at-large teams. That's just making it where more teams make the playoff. Now a lot of people, like, well, a group of five will get in there. Not all the time does Cincinnati or BYU, which BYU is joining the Big 12 anyway, so that's irrelevant, UCF and other teams like that, make make it that high in the polls. You know, Cincinnati did last year, but it just doesn't happen all the time, and Cincinnati would have made it anyway. It's the qualifier from the American anyway. So it's not like it's going to happen that often. You're going to have a group of five teams in there. Top four get a bye, so that means your top four conferences, which in most years is probably going to be the SEC, the Big Ten, the ACC, and probably the Big 12, maybe the Pac-12, I don't know, but that's probably what it's going to be, the top four conference champions get a bye. Now let's break down the pros and cons of this, and I have many. Pro number one, more teams get in. That's obvious. You know, you're going from four to 12, more teams are going to get in. That's, you know, you do math, it's eight more teams, so... That's going to make a lot of people happy and a lot of teams happy that have never made the playoff before. So, that I mean, that's a good thing, obviously. That's why they're doing it in the first place, part of it. Uh, less opt-outs. So, major bowl games, you had, like, Kenny Pickett last year with uh, Pittsburgh, and you've had Will Greer in the past, at quarterback for West Virginia, and just tons of players. You know, defensive players, offensive players, ever since... Jake Butt from Michigan, the tight end, got hurt. His draft style went from the second round to, like, the sixth round in a bowl game. Players have been opting out because they didn't make the playoff. They feel it's not worth it to them to play in a New Year's Day Bowl. So now if you're a top 12 team, you're going to be playing, and maybe the lower teams will be more more willing not to opt out because they have less top draft picks, and the games are not, you know, not as big, and and then the schools probably are, you know, more happy to be there than anything else. So the opt-outs should not be as many. That's a good thing. I like that. Uh, because the games are going to be quote unquote meaningful because it's a playoff game, which I don't. That's the bad thing about the playoff because the playoff made it where these play they hype up the playoff and these players think it's not worth playing the major bowl games, which is just downright ridiculous. You're supposed to want to be there. I understand injuries and your draft stop, but you're, it's never happened pre 2010 ever. Uh, games are more meaningful. That's good because you know late in the season you'll have a team like Texas A&M. It's like eight and three. And then you have, uh, you know, Ole Miss, it's like 9-2, and two, and it's like they're playing each other. Does the game really matter? Not really, because both teams are going to make the playoff, and it's all about the playoff. Now both those teams have a chance to make the college football playoff 12-team format. So, like, if A&M beat Ole Miss and they go 9-3, and three, there's a chance maybe they could squeak in at 12. And Ole Miss, if they lose, might fall out. So that, that makes the games, I guess, more meaningful and more watchable to a lot of people because they have stakes, I guess. So that's a good thing. The cons, I actually have more cons than pros. I really do. I mean, I know a lot of people will be like, well, how, why? You know, but here, here are my reasons. The top three teams are going to beat up on the bottom three. So any of the bottom ones anyway. You, you, you look at Oregon and Georgia, and I understand that this is not every single result. I know like Alabama went on the road 
Lost at Texas A&M last year, and Texas A&M wasn't ranked. I understand that. But Georgia beat Oregon. Georgia was number three, and Oregon was number 11. It was 49-3. to So if you do that logic, if Oregon is number 11 in the playoff and they're playing, just say Georgia's ranked number two, and that happens, what what why does this game need to be played? It doesn't. It's not even close. The talent at the top top is just too good for the teams that are ranked a little bit lower, and that is just not going to help the watchability. People have already been complaining that one versus four last year, Alabama, Cincinnati, and two versus three, Michigan, Georgia, was not even fun to watch because the games were blowouts. They weren't even close. So I don't think that's going to that's gonna change at all unless NIL can spread the wealth around with these players and more teams have great players and it evens it out. More games, more injuries. That's bad because if you have more games, you're going to have more injuries. And you're adding three three or four extra games to the schedule every single season for these teams that make the playoff. And there are going to be more injuries because of it. And that's not good for the sport either. Because I mean, basketball, you can have March Madness and you can play all these games. You can play seven games to make to win a championship. And it's fine because players don't get hurt as much in basketball. Football, there's so much injuries because of contact that if you're adding three more games, three, four more games, it's just it's not good for the players' bodies at the end of the day. This is being, only being done for money. They'll, they'll, they'll say the argument is because they're wanting to add more teams and they're wanting more teams to make it, but it's about money. Because if you're playing all these, these games... How much more money is you know the college football playoff and you know the NCAA going to make? They're going to make millions of more dollars just by playing three more quote unquote big games. It doesn't matter that it's forty nine to three at the score. It doesn't matter if three more players tear their ACL. It doesn't matter. It's just about money. They only want more money. That's obvious. Uh, this is still mostly Power Five. Again, the group of five is not going to really get a lot of exposure here. I already said that earlier. The Power Five is going to get most of the love. They're going to get basically almost every team, every 10 at the maximum. I'm at the minimum and probably 11 at the maximum with one group of five being American or Mountain West champion getting in there. So it's not going to be as you know good as you think on that. And there's still pay, not not of parity. Again, you know the teams at the top are going to continue to win. You might have an upset here or there where the number four team loses to the number eight team or whatever, but. It's just not going to happen that often. Alabama and Georgia and Ohio State, they're, they're still going to win until, until the talent gap is lessened. And should, do, should I, do I think they should stop at 12? I do. Uh, I don't think they should expand it anymore because then people are going to be like, well, we need to expand it to 16 and expand it to 24. That will fix everything. That's not going to fix anything at all. I mean, the only thing that make it, if you make the, the games more, if you make it to 24, then, I mean, Alabama and Ohio State would be playing so many teams that they might, you know, lose and uh, slip up to a team because they're playing so many games. But, again, you don't want these injuries, and it's all about money. They should stop at 12. 12 is probably a healthy number because any team that's not ranked in the top 12 is not good enough to even compete at the top anyway. They should stop at 12 and just call it a day, but you never know. If money's involved, you never know where they're going to stop at. It could go to 100. You, you just have no idea. But we'll see. But I mean, I, I do. I don't think this is a complete bad thing. I, I mean, there are a few good takeaways from this. But at the end of the day, uh, I, I I don't think this was a great move. I, I think that there's a lot more cons and pros. I'm not saying it's all cons or are pros as I listed, but there are a lot of cons. It's just it's just a money move, and it, it, it it's disguised as to help more teams get in. And that, I mean, again. That is that is part of what why it was done. But at the end of the day, it was about money. I don't like that, but it is what it is. But it's going to be really interesting to see if they stop at 12. It's going to be really interesting once the 12-team playoff exists. If, you know, with NIL, maybe some of these teams can compete with the top schools and make it more interesting because the co current college football playoff with just four teams isn't even really that interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see. Comment down below what you guys think about the college football playoff 12-team expansion and whether what my opinions on the pros and cons are right and what your opinions are on it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more sports content. Like this video, and I will see you next time.